Welcome back. I hope you guys are ready for a good movement session today. Got a great one planned for us. Lots of mobility. A um, little bit of strengthening. A little bit of stretch. It's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. I hope you guys are excited. We're going to start from a standing position today. And we'll start with a little bit of our opuhuli, which is the Hawaiian abdominal massage. Um, and then from there, we're going to massage some other aspects. We'll start with the axial skeleton department, work into the appendicular skeleton. Um, then we'll incorporate some mobilization standing up. And then we get into the meat and potatoes of our practice today. Hopefully you guys eat meat and potatoes. I don't know. Maybe you guys are vegetarians. I don't know. Um, but in any case, we'll do some groundwork, some crawling. Um, we'll definitely get back down onto the ground and then do some movements where we're getting up off the ground. And then we'll end with some stretch. I hope that sounds good to all of you. Hopefully you guys got a little water, something to drink. Got my water here. And I have my trusty timer. Hope you guys have your timer. Every day, set your timer and get on the ground and move around. Okay? So if you would be so kind to come to a standing position, feet shoulder width apart. Okay, so from this standing position, we're going to start with our hands placed on our abdomen, and we're just going to do some gentle clockwise circles. So I'm going to get a little bit closer to my camera so you guys can see what's going on here. So we're doing some gentle clockwise circles, about five. From there, one hand goes to the back and does the same exact thing. About five, switch hands. Now the other hand goes towards the back. About five. From here, you're gonna draw your hands towards the center. Just drawing your hands gently towards the center. As you do this, breathe in, breathe out. Make sure that you're breathing into your belly, softening, releasing any unnecessary tension in your abdominal area. Inhale, exhale, nice and smooth. This is really important for those of us that have experienced back pain. My Hawaiian teacher, Kaipo Kaneaku, would say all back pain comes from the stomach. That's a secret. Maybe not now. Now you know. Okay. From here, we're going to go front and back sides. So you're just taking your hands towards the front and then towards the back. Now you could do palm palm on both sides, or you can use the back side of your hand. And you can go as high into the ribs as you like. Okay, nice and easy. From here, we're going to squeeze on the ascending descending colon. Nice gentle squeeze. So this is my hip bone here on the top. And I'm just taking my hands and I'm squeezing right into that ascending and descending colon. Nice and smooth. Okay. From here, I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to put it above my head by placing my hand behind my head. And I'm going to stroke into the lateral rib cage and armpit. So you're stroking through the underside and backside of your shoulder. So this is a friction technique. It's friction, but it's also kind of gliding. Friction would be a little bit more with a little bit more pressure. But what we're doing is we're just massaging through the lateral rib cage and armpit. You can add some gentle movement here so I can laterally flex my spine to the opposite direction. 
nice and easy. Then I'm going to switch sides. Other hand goes behind my, my neck. Start to massage into the armpit, the back side. You can move your arm around. This is really good for those of us that wear a bra or some sort of restrictive piece of clothing. So this is really important to massage into the armpit. That's where some of our lymph nodes are. Okay, nice and easy. Now from here, we're gonna take our right hand, stroke from the left side of the neck through the sternum and into the abdomen, switch sides. So we just take our full palm, stroke through, and down through the center. So you're adding some nice gentle cervical um, rotation. You're just gently, gently, gently circling um, or rotating the neck and then with the weight of your palm, stroking down through the side of the neck and into your abdomen. Nice and smooth. Okay, from here, we're gonna take our strokes into our face. So we're gonna, we'll first start in our neck. So we're just gonna take our hands right along the jawline and we're just going to facilitate a stretch reflex in the skin. So you're just taking your hands and using your hands in a circular motion at the side of the neck, all the way down to the clavicle, and then right back up. So this stretch reflex that you're pushing into the skin and stretching the skin, you can see my skin stretching, this helps to pump the lymph. Okay, so however you're doing it is totally fine. You wanna make sure that each movement and massage that you do today, you make it work for you. Okay, from here, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna glide off to the side. And then my fingers are gonna travel along the sternocleidomastoid, okay? So from the center, off to the side, stroke down, switch sides. This is really good for moving the fluids that kind of accumulate in the face, especially after we've had a night of eating maybe too much salt. Okay, or maybe we didn't get enough sleep and our eyes are puffy. So this is a way to create a vacuum for the fluids to go back to where they need to go, which is to dump right back into the heart at the subclavian vein. All right, from here, let's take our hands into our face and you're just gonna do some gentle circular strokes into, this, into the jawline right here. And even into the sides of your face, and then into the face itself, and especially around the eyes. You wanna massage into the eyes, around the eyes. You can add some pinching. Okay, and then now we're just gonna take all that fluid, we're gonna rinse all that fluid off to the side and then down back towards the heart. So off to the side, down towards the heart, off to the side. Sorry, that probably looks pretty crazy. <laughs> and down to the center. But again, this is so important. This is really good for moving the fluids in the face. Okay. Okay, from here, we're gonna take our fingers into the back side of our scale, but make sure we get our head as well. So you're gonna take your fingers, you're gonna massage into the base of the skull, and then you're gonna take those strokes into the scalp itself. Don't be afraid to mess that hair up now. Just a nice gentle massage into your scalp. You can get the ears. Don't forget the ears. And massaging into the scalp helps to prevent things like stroke. Woo! Okay. From here, I'm going to go back to standing now. From here, 
we're going to start to massage into the leg. So you're going to take your hands. You're going to take your hands on the fronts of your thighs. You're going to forward fold, massage down through the fronts. And as you stand back up, you stroke up through the back. Okay, so down through the front, up through the back. Repeat. Down through the front, up through the back. You can press down into your legs. This will help to stretch the backside even more productively as you press into those hands, pressing into the front sides of the legs. You can even take your stroke down into the front side and top side of the foot. And then when you come back up, you can pull, really pull on those areas. Down and up. Down, up. Okay, from here, we're going to take a staggered stance, one foot in front of the other. And now I'm going to do the outsides or the outside and inside of the front leg. Still using my forward flexion, flexion and extension. Not as much extension, but definitely flexion happening here of the spine. Now take the other leg forward, same exact thing. So you're just massaging on the outside of the leg. Make sure that you really focus on getting up through this hip area, front side and back, massaging through the hips, getting our body ready for more movement. Okay. From here, we're going to massage into the shoulder a little bit more. So we're going to take the strokes into the arm. So you're going to start on the top side of your shoulder. We're down through the top of your arm, the underside of your arm, especially the underside of the arm. Right in through this part right here. Take it down into the elbow, forearm, wrist, and then even our fingers. Okay, and I switch sides. Let's get the other shoulder going. Massage into the shoulder. Massaging the shoulder or any part of the body helps to stimulate the mechanoreceptors. So that way when we move in our movement practice this morning, our tissues are more awake and more alert. You noticed how your face felt a few moments ago after we massaged it. You probably felt pretty stimulated in a positive way in the face. Same thing happens in all the other parts that we massage. We're stimulating those, those movement-oriented nerves within the tissues. They're called mechanoreceptors. Okay, rub the hands together. Get the fingers, close them tight, open them up. Nice and strong. Okay, so from here, we're gonna continue our mobilization and I want you to come down onto your knees, please. From your knees, you're gonna lower your forearms to the ground and you're just gonna wave your body from side to side. So this is a mobilization for the spine. So all you're doing is, is you're just letting go of unnecessary tension. You're creating length from the tip of your tailbone to the top of your head and you're just letting your spine relax. As you move your body from side to side, see if you can feel the micro movements, the most subtle movements as you go, really gentle through the spine. And then from here, we're gonna take ourselves back, take your hands back and do the same exact thing. So now I'm in this position, I'm gonna open up through the front side of my chest and I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm just gonna rock my body from side to side and get some gentle movements of my spine. Play around with pressing through the hands, depressing the shoulder, retracting the shoulder, opening up through that chest and getting a nice gentle mobilization of the spine. Okay, from here, we're gonna add a little bit of lateral flexion. So we're just gonna take one hand over to the side and then back up, switch sides. So we're just going over the side, switch sides. If you want to add to this, you can reach more to the front, perhaps more over to the back. Add some variations to make it work for you. So these are just gentle mobilizations of our spine. 
nice and easy. From here, we're going to add a little bit of rotation. So you're going to post one hand behind and you're just going to reach across the body, switch sides. Again, as you're doing this movement, you might want to couple the movement with your breathing. So as I come to center, I breathe in. As I, as I rotate and reach, I breathe out. So add whatever little detail that you want to get more out of it. Nice and strong the whole time. Okay, from here, we're gonna start mobilizing the hips a little bit more. So we're gonna do this from a knee hand crawl position. So from your hand and knee position, or knee hand position, you're going to, first of all, focus on good position. So you wanna make sure the pits of the elbows are pointed forward. You wanna make sure that your shoulders are uh, protracted so that they're moving towards the front. So your spine is moving up towards the ceiling. You're gonna draw your belly button carefully towards your spine. And then without moving your hip position too much, you're going to extend through the hip. From this position, you're going to take your leg out to the side, almost like you're stepping over an obstacle and then bring it right back and then down, okay? So we can switch sides with that one. So again, good position, draw your belly button towards your spine. Just maintain that good, strong position. Bring the hip open to the side, and then right back down, switch sides. Now with this one, we can choose to straighten our leg as well. If it starts to feel a little bit crampy though in the hip, then just focus on the bent knee variation. You can also choose to keep a straight leg and just use simple extension through the posterior hip. We're just activating that posterior hip. So that way when we do some of our, uh, our other movements today, our posterior hip muscles are gonna be on. Okay, switch sides. Okay, from here, we're going to add some shoulder mobilization. So what we're going to do for our shoulder mobilizations is we're going to take one hand behind our neck and we're going to rotate, opening up the body, pressing through the supporting hand and opening up through the shoulder and also through the spine. From here, I'm going to take my elbow that's up in the air and reach it towards the opposite side hip. So I reach up and under. Remember to explore different ranges of motion, perhaps looking around a little bit with your head, adding some different positions of your spine. And then let's switch sides. Same exact thing on the other side. So again, you have your hand behind your neck. You're pressing through that supporting arm, opening up through the, the front side of the chest, rotating through the spine, and then reach the elbow across to the opposite side hip. Nice and strong. So this is really good for the posterior shoulder musculature. It's really good for the um, rotators of the spine, rotatories, occipiti, etc. Nice and easy. 
Okay, guys, so let's go back into immobilization for the spine. This time we're going to do a little bit of cat and cow to start off with. So drop your sternum towards the bottom, towards the ground, and then lift your mid back towards the ceiling. Alternate back and forth. So see if you can distribute the flexion and extension of the spine evenly throughout the whole spine. Perhaps you want to bring your body weight forward and back to accentuate the mobilization of the spine through this movement. Sending nice waves of movement through the whole spine. From here, let's add some lateral flexion. So you're just going to look back towards your feet. And then we can add a combination of all the above. So you can, I like to think of it like a jump rope with my spine. And I'm just moving through a nice full range and adding whatever movements I missed with my spine. Nice and smooth movement, fluid movement throughout the whole spine. Nice and strong. Okay, so in this next hip mobilization, we're going to do a crawl rollover to a crawl lunge. So this is how this looks. So from either a knee hand or a foot hand crawl position, I'm going to extend through the hip and reach over and across. So this is my rollover. And then from here, I'm going to come back into my starting position and step forward into a lunge. Okay, once I'm in my lunge, I can add a reach. And then I go right back to my starting position in either my knee hand or my foot hand crawl. Now I'm going to do the other side. So again, I'm going to extend through the hip, reach over, plant the foot, lower down, Come right back into my starting position and then reach forward with that leg into a lunge, add my reach. Okay, so this is a little bit of strength, a little bit of mobilization, a little bit of stretch, all at the same time. Add a nice powerful reach. And then when you're ready, go ahead and go back to your starting position, switch sides. So again, you're nice and strong through the full body. When you're ready, extend through the hip, reach it over, and then add your lunge. Reach, 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 however you like, okay? And then go back to your starting position, switch sides. So again, extend through the hip, Come over, bring that foot forward, reach it out. You got something in your room that you can grab for, like a rock? Feel free. Got a rock over here. I'll put it down. Go back to my starting position, my knee hand crawl. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to kick that leg over nice and strong. And then bring that leg forward into a nice strong lunge. I can move forward and back, add some nice gentle mobilizations this way. Nice and strong. Okay, switch sides. So you can go as fast or slow as you want with this movement, but take your time. See if you can find different ranges of motion where you can add some stimulation to the tissues and then bring your attention to that, those areas of the body as well. Okay, so you kick over, lunge forward, reach. Okay, nice and strong.
Now, while you're doing this movement, see if there's a side that you move more easily than the other. Perhaps that's the side you need to work on. Nice and strong every time, guys. It's a great movement to warm up with. And again, you can add whatever little details that you want through this movement. All right. From here, let's go ahead and come back to a standing position. And we're going to move into our first full movement series, which is going to involve some good mornings, some squat knee tap lunges, and then some side sit hip swivels with a hip press get up. I know it sounds like a lot of words, but let's just get up right into it. So let's stand up, please. From our standing position, your feet are going to be roughly shoulder width apart. You're going to create length by pressing through the crown of the head, and you're going to hinge forward at the hips with a nice neutral spine. Now from here, you're gonna alternately bend one knee and then the other. Play around with the different sensations here. Perhaps I wanna reach something over there. Perhaps I wanna reach something on this side. So you're feeling a nice gentle sense of stretch, but see if you can keep these hips, these posterior hips active. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and press ourselves, pressing through the crown of the head to come back to standing and then right back down. So we're hinging forward at the hips, adding some gentle bending through the knees, feeling strong through the legs, focusing on power. Imagine you had to lift something up. If you have something in your room that you can lift up, perhaps a weight, or in my case, I'd like to grab a stone. I can just hold on to it here and notice the different sensations of stretch, mobility, and strength. Okay, when I'm ready, come right back up. Lower back down. Perhaps you want to do several in a row. Go far, only as far down as you can while keeping a nice neutral spine. There's a soft bend in the knees. And they're not fully locked out necessarily. Nice and strong. All right, so from here, we're gonna move into our squat, knee tap, lunge, get up, okay? So we squat, tap the knees, step out into our lunge, get up squat tap lunge get up i can either step back or i can step forward as well i can also go backwards through the motion step back with a lunge go to the knee tap drop the heels towards the ground and come to standing that way a lot of different variations that we can use here. Make sure that you're holding just a tiny bit of tension through the abdominal area as though you were going to be carrying a load. Nice and slow, nice and smooth, feeling the strength and control of the lower body. Really beautiful movement for creating strength and mobility through the hips, knees, feet, all the good stuff, all the stuff in the foundation.
Nice and strong. Okay, guys. From here, let's lower ourselves down onto the ground into a side sit position. From here, we're gonna post our arms behind and just swivel those knees from side to side. If this is super easy, cause you're already feeling pretty warm from the movements we just did, take the hands out of it. So now we're just moving those hips from side to side, greasing and gliding those hip joints. See if you can actively press the legs into the ground. Pay attention to the sensations in the hips. And when you're ready, we can add a hip hinge with a hip press. Lower right back down. A swivel, hip hinge, hip press. Lower yourself right back down. So again, if you have a weight that you have in your environment, you can add that as well. So lower down nice and slow. Swivel. Hip press. Lower down. Switch sides. Make sure that you're breathing deeply and expansively the whole time. And always play around with different positions to make it more functional. All right. So right back up to standing for another set of good mornings. All right, so this time, if you wanna take your feet a little bit further apart, perhaps in more of a sumo squat stance, and this time again, same exact thing. So you're gonna hinge forward at the hips. And again, you can add a little bit of extra motion by bending each leg independently or bending each knee. Okay, and then when you're ready, go ahead and press through the crown of the head and come right back up to your standing position. Perhaps shake it out if you need to. And then come right back in. If you want to add a little bit to this one in terms of weight, you can take your arms out in front of the body. So this adds some additional load to the movement. You can also add weight to this movement. Nice and strong, feeling the movement. Imagine how this might actually apply to your daily life. I'm outside gardening. I'm moving this rock from here to over here. Oh no, wait, I want it back over there. No, maybe it looks better over there. <laughs> celebrating the different expressions, the different ways that we can move the body. Okay, nice and strong the whole time. You wanna add a little bit of mobilization through the spine through this position, feel free. Remember, I give you baseline suggestions for movement and you guys can take it whatever direction you want. So this is a hip hinge movement and you can add your little variations and, and additional expressions that feel appropriate to you and your body. Okay, so right back into our squat knee tap lunge. So drop the weight back first. You're not extending through the spine, but you definitely want to sit the hips back, sitting into your full squat, and then tap those knees on the ground. And then when you're ready, press through the hips, lunge, step back, or step forward, whichever one you like. Then I can back myself up through the movement as well. However you like to do it, it's fine with me. So squat, tap, lunge, get up. Squat, tap, lunge, get up. Spread the toes wide on your supporting legs. Make sure that you're really feeling the strength and support of the lower body. Okay. 
Now I can also, with my lunge, step out to the side. That's another option. Because again, any variation I want to add, as long as it's safe for my body, feel free. Nice and strong the whole time. Okay, guys, so right back into our side sit hip swivels. This time, after we do our hip hinge, we're going to get up. So we'll swivel our knees side to side, hip hinge, press, and then I'm going to take this back leg, swing it towards the front, and then come to standing. I can lower myself right back down and then switch sides. So I swivel, hip hinge, hip press. You know the drill. And then lower yourself right back down. So as, see if you guys can do this movement without using your hands. So you swivel your knees side to side, hip hinge, hip press. And then go ahead and come to standing however you can. If you need to use your hands, that's totally fine. The ultimate goal is to get to the point where we can do these movements without using our hands. There's a direct correlation between our ability to get up and down off the ground without any support and our mortality. So we really want to make a habit of making sure our joints can go through a full their fullest range of motion with strength and control. Keep it nice and slow, change it up a little bit. You don't have to get down, up and down off the ground in the same exact way that I am. However, make sure that whatever movement you're doing, you're getting nice mobilization of the hip, and strengthening of those hips as well. Okay, so from here, we're gonna move into our next series and we're gonna start with a cross-sit rotational get-up. So from this cross-sit position, whatever leg is closest to your body, you're gonna post an arm behind you. From here, I'm gonna lift my pelvis off the ground. I'm gonna go into a high hip crawl, pardon me, and then I'm going to walk my hands back, come to standing. And then I'll lower myself right back down, hands to the ground, and right back into my cross sit. Okay? So let me switch sides now. Take the other leg in front. Post the arm behind, shoulders down, nice and stable through that whole shoulder. And then I'm going to lift my pelvis off the ground, come into a high hip crawl, Walk the hands back, come to standing, okay? Lower yourself right back down towards the ground. Rotate around back into your cross sit, okay? Switch sides. So whatever leg is closest to the body, you reach back, come into your high hip crawl, walk those hands back, come to standing, lower right back down. Okay, nice and smooth, nice and controlled. High hip crawl, walk the hands back. You guys know what to do. Nice and smooth. Okay. Perhaps one more in there. Stand up and then right back down. Okay, so in our next movement, we're going to do an inverted crawl hip press with an overhead reach. So inverted crawl means that our, from a seated position, our hands are going to be posted behind us. You're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together and press through the supporting arms. From here, you're going to press your hips up into the air, shift your weight over to one arm, and add a nice, gentle overhead reach. Okay? From here, lower yourself down with control and then switch sides. So I press through the hips, 
reach one arm above the head, add little different angles of direction with your reach, and then lower yourself right back down. Okay, so if you want to add a little bit of inverted crawling to this movement, you can. And as soon as you're ready, press through those hips, reach above the head. And again, you can reach more across. You can open more through the chest, but the supporting shoulder, this is where I want a lot of emphasis because we want this shoulder to be stable and strong. You don't want to just be whipping your body around unless you have that ability. So nice and slow, nice and smooth. Press and reach. Press and reach. Okay, guys. So from here, we're going right back into our cross sit rotational get ups. So from our cross sit, remember whatever leg is closest to your body, I'm going to switch mine. You post an arm behind on that same side. You lift the pelvis off the ground and then slowly turn your body to come into a high hip crawl. Walk those hands back, come to standing, and then lower yourself right back down. Okay. Now with this set, you have options. You can always come to high hip crawl and then just spin to the other side. That's an option. Nice and smooth. You wanna make sure that you play around with the sensation of distri distribution of weight. So when I post my arm behind me, not, I don't wanna put all my weight into my hand. I wanna distribute that load evenly between my feet and my hands. Maybe I wanna add a little bit of crawling here. And then when I'm ready, come right back into my cross sit position. Remember to stay loose through the whole spine, nice and relaxed. But then when you move and you start to carry that load, get a little bit of stability going through the abdominal area by drawing your belly button towards your spine ever so slightly. High hip crawl, stand up, perhaps add a little bit of walking around. And then when you're ready, lower those hands down, right back into your cross sit. Keep your body nice and loose, nice and relaxed the whole time. Woo. All right, so from here, we're going right back into our inverted crawl, hip press with overhead reach. So if you need a little break for your wrists, maybe spend just a couple seconds just massaging through your wrists, maybe adding some nice gentle um, rotational movements through the forearm with your wrist in either extension and or flexion. So this is really good for the bones in the wrist. So just a nice gentle extension through the wrist with arm bone rotation. And this helps to stretch and mobilize the carpals of the wrist. Okay, nice and easy. Okay, and then when you're ready, let's go ahead and get into our inverted crawl position, please. You really wanna make sure that you're focusing on strength through the posterior shoulder. Don't let your shoulders collapse in towards the front but rather bring them back and down. And then when you're ready, go ahead and press through the hips, spread those toes wide. See if you can have a nice solid foundation from which to reach from, okay? And then switch sides, reach. Perhaps you wanna add a load, see what happens. However you like. I really don't need a load on this one. This is good all by itself. Your own body weight is a tremendous thing to be able to move around. <laughs> so add your nice press, your reach, staying nice and active through the whole body the whole time. Nice and strong. Okay, guys, from here, 
we're going to go right into our stretching. So we're going to start from a seated position. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring one leg behind into our side sit. And we're going to straighten that back leg and come up over that front hip just a little bit to get a nice stretch through the posterior hip, piriformis, external rotators of the hip, of the hip pelvis. So as we start to move through these stretches, I want to encourage you guys to start to turn your attention in towards your breathing and start to calm yourself down by slowing down your breath rate. See if you can focus on strength and relaxation all at the same time. So even though there's an element of stretch, there's also an element of activity. So for example, I may have my leg stretched behind me, but I can also straighten that leg up and see how that affects the impact or how that impacts the stretch. Okay, so nice and strong. Feeling different positions, perhaps looking around in my environment. Slowing down the breath. Starting to relax. Okay, from here, let's go ahead and swivel those knees to the other side. Same exact thing on the other leg. So we reach that leg behind. Get a nice stretch through the external rotators of the head. So add your little micro movements. Remember to think about movement through the lens of nutrition. Whatever movements you're not getting through your daily life, those are the movements I want to encourage you to add. So all these little details, all these little micro movements are so important when it comes to movement practice. Let's switch and do the other side again, please. Nice and strong in your position. Straighten that leg back behind you. You can either roll onto the top side of the foot. You can practice or try rolling the femur bone in the hip socket of that straightened leg. You curl the toes under. Same exact thing. Little gentle movements that you can add to get more out of this stretch. Nice and strong, breathe in, breathe out, nice and slow and long. Surrendering unnecessary tension, feeling nice and strong and stable through the whole body. Let's switch to the other side one more time. Reaching that leg behind, curling those toes underneath, Adding whatever little variations you want, perhaps lowering your forearms to the ground, maybe adding some gentle spinal wave movements, whatever you like. Yeah. All right, guys, from here, we're going to stretch the front side of the hip. We're going to do a couch stretch or a hip flexor stretch. So from here, we're going to get into a nice lunge. We're going to scoop our pelvis underneath. And once we're in good position and we can feel the control of the feet on the ground, we're going to gently bring our body weight forward. From here, you can add little variations of movement by bringing this hip that's in the stretched position. You can bring it forward. You can bring it back. Very, very gentle and controlled all at the same time. We can bring our body weight forward. You can change the position of your femur. You can bring your body weight back. Forward. Perhaps even adding a circular type movement. Focusing on the mobilization of the hip or the head of the femur inside the acetabulum. Okay, we want to see how we can get that hip to grease and glide within the hip joint. Ultimately, we want our joints to be in what's called a centrated position or joint centration. It's a term that Dr. Evan Osar uses, and it's so important when it comes to the function of our joints. Okay, let's go ahead and slowly switch sides. Again, get yourself into position first. 
you know, maybe even mobilize just a little bit without tension. Relax. Shake out the arms, shake out the spine. Okay. And then when you're ready, get yourself into that good position. Scoop the pelvis underneath and start to play around with the sensations of the pelvis. Take that pelvis forward and back. Straighten the front leg. Straighten the back leg or bring your body weight forward. Lots of little variations that we can use here. Nice and strong the whole time. If you want to add a gentle reach, feel free. So we're always focusing on strength, stability, mobility, flexibility. All of those variables can be practiced all at the same time. It doesn't mean that there isn't validity in practicing those things in separately, but we can also do it integratively. Integratively, you know what I'm saying. So let's switch sides. So again, nice and strong. Maybe this time, instead of having the knee on the ground, you take the knee up off the ground in the backside and notice how that adds to the stretch. A nice, strong, stable lower body. That's what we want to feel here. You can pulse through this position here. Bring your body weight forward a little bit back. Just feel the control and the power of the lower body. So there's an element of stretch happening, but it's done with, with an element of strengthening. Okay, so you're in this nice, strong, powerful position. And you're controlling yourself through this position. So this leg stretched behind me, I can bring that knee up towards the ceiling, lower it back down. I can even switch to the other side, get this side one last time. And again, whatever variation works for your body, that's the one you use. You can bring that, that back leg knee off the ground. Is really focusing on the stabilization aspect, the control, feeling the ground with my feet. Just really feeling the different angles and variations and expressions of this movement. Just noticing how it feels in different positions. Nice and strong okay guys from here let's bring our palms down onto the ground and then bring the knee so we're in a knee hand crawl position and then from here we're going to lower our pelvis towards the ground into a nice spinal extension okay so from our spinal extension what we can do is we can kind of shift our body weight from side to side looking behind towards the feet if this is uncomfortable on your wrist, you can always go into a loose fist position. That's an option as well. If you want to hike up a hip and bring one knee up towards your armpit, you can feel free. Notice how that changes the stretch. And again, this is another one of those movements, guys, where, you know, if you're at the computer for any length of time or sitting in a car all day, this is the type of movement that can really help to open up and stretch those tissues that have been stuck into that flexed forward position. So we're opening up through this movement. Nice and strong. Just feeling the gentle sensations of stretch. Nice and strong the whole time. All right, from here, Let's bring our weight back over our heels into an active child's pose. So we're dropping our weight back over our heels. You can lower your forearms to the ground if you like and add some undulations or spinal articulation. Breathing deeply and expansively as you go. Now from here, I'm gonna send a wave of movement to go back into my spinal extension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send a wave of movement forward 
and then come right back into my spinal extension. From here, I'm gonna squeeze through the hip flexors, drop my weight back over my heels, right back into child's pose. Okay, so I'm gonna alternate in between those two movements. So from spinal extension, and then I'm gonna squeeze through the hip flexor. Coming down into child's pose, wave of motion through the spine to come right back into spinal extension. Okay, so go at your own speed. This is an active recovery. We want to take our time to be nice and smooth. If you're feeling this extension in one segment of your spine more than anywhere else, I'm going to encourage you to back up out of it and then lower yourself back down, distributing extension more evenly through the whole spine. Nice and easy. Breathe in, breathe out. Last time back into child's pose. Okay, guys, from here, let's go ahead and lay on our backs, please. So come to a supine position on your mat. Just a couple more movements here. We're going to start with our arms and legs in opposite directions. So arms above the head. And then what we're going to do is we're going to gently, leading with the center of our body, we're going to crunch into a fetal position and then go back into extension and do the same thing to the other side. So extend and flex. Extend and flex. A couple more of these. This is really great for recalibrating the spine for those of us that have experienced back pain in our lives. This is a very important movement to know how to do. It activates the internal external oblique, quadratus lumborum, rectus abdominis, transverse abdominis. Activates everything very, very well. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and lay on our backs. Three gentle breaths right here at your own speed. So again, you want to just turn your attention inside as much as you possibly can. Relax and surrender unnecessary tension. Breathe in, breathe out. Bring into mind something that you're thankful for this morning. Notice how that makes you feel. Breathe in, breathe out, nice and slow. Just enjoying the sensations that you feel in your body. As you take in that third breath, I want to invite you to scan your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes, shoulder to fingertip. Relax all aspects of your body from top to toe, shoulder to fingertip. Rock your hips from side to side, just relaxing the body, feeling the rivers of energy, blood, lymph, et cetera. All the fluids moving effortlessly through the whole body, which helps to bring groceries in and garbage out. Letting yourself be nice and relaxed and then just smooth. From here, let's go ahead and bend one knee and then the other. Rock yourself up to an upright position. Okay, guys, that's a wrap for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed our movement session. You know that I sure did. Um, today's session was focused a lot on um, the back, actually. Um, so for anybody that suffers with um, or has experienced back pain in their life, this is a good movement practice for that. Thank you guys so much for being here today. You know I got a lot of love for you and appreciation. Every time I see your names pop up, I'm like, yes, there they are. And here we are. Lots of love. Peace.